Berwick upon Tweed. Tonight I am in quarantine with Taylor Mitchell and Xander Brown from Not Now Norman. Hi. Pleased to meet you guys. How are you? Me too. We're we're uh, we're good. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have to know where is Berwick upon Tweed? I've never heard of it before, and it sounds like an idyllic little village. Or is it? Am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's pretty idyllic. It's uh, it's the most northern town in in England. So we're literally Ooh. on the Scottish border. Um, right. It's it's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds it sounds lovely anyway. Um, so. I was going to describe you for people that don't know, not now Norman, you're a female fronted intergenerational punchy four piece rock band and we know where you hail from, you're described as intergenerational, so what are the ages of the band members? <laughs> um, well I'm 27, um, Lara and Bodie they're in the, the late teens, about 18, 19 um, and no, no, I'm 59. <laughs> <laughs> Are you really? Yeah. <laughs> You're looking very good for 59. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> I'm, 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 he's, he's my, he's my dad. dad. <laughs> I wondered. I yeah. thought, well, you know, you're, you're, you're close together in the same vicinity when we're social yeah. distancing. I thought there must be a connection there. Yeah. Right. So this is lovely. So a father and daughter yeah. in the same way. Oh, that. You made my day. That that is really really sweet. Um, <laughs> I want to know how this all started and why are you called Not Now Norman? Was there somebody called Norman? This is what I got in my head. There was somebody that called Norman that was pestering you to be in a band, and you just kept saying Not Now Norman just to get rid of him. So is, is that what happened? Well, you you you're somewhat close. We had a. <laughs> Uh, a while ago, hence the the cockerel and, and the and the logo called Norman, and um, it was my sister's job to to feed him, and he was known for being um, bad tempered. <laughs> okay. And my sister, bless her, she would go into the garden armed with Wellington boots up to her knees, a broomstick handle, and a bin lid, and you'd still hear from the garden, "Not now, Norman." <laughs> Every morning, we're like, we need to do something with that. <laughs> it's a great name. <laughs> it's brilliant. And I love stories like that. It was like when I asked those dumb crows, how did you come up with those dumb crows? It was like, well, well my dad came out one day and he was shouting at the birds, saying, those dumb crows. Like, you know, I, I love it when it names a, a form sort of so naturally like that. Um, so let's talk, about, let's talk about you because, um, Taylor, because you didn't set out to be in a band. And I, I've read a bit about you and how this all kind of came about. And I was quite surprised, to say the least, that you'd gone for job interviews and you, you didn't have any success. And so t talk us through what happened, how it all started. Right, so um, I've got uh, you know, physical disabilities. I've got a bone condition called uh, hereditary multiple exostosis. And I'm also on the spectrum and I've got ADHD. Um, and I uh, came out of college with a degree um, and, you know, eager to work. Um, and because we live in, um, I, I say that, it's, uh, I'm hoping this is the reason, but because we live in a small town, not a lot of jobs I can do physically. And the ones I could do, um, I would go in and the interview would go great. And then, you know, they would ask, you know, is there anything that we should know? Or sometimes they wouldn't even ask that. Sometimes it would just be like a, a hint of a disability or something like that. And I've had people, uh, you know, take deep breaths in. I've had people roll their eyes at me. I've even had somebody tut at me. Um, oh, goodness. Get me wrong. Some of the job interviews that I would go for, um, you know, I, would, I, I just wasn't the best person for the job. Mm -hmm. But when you come out and you know that it's because of something that you can't help it really gets mm. to you so eventually um i found it really difficult to get out of bed because i just thought what's the point um and it was it was my dad that um turned around and said right get out of bed we're gonna do some recording for a bit of fun um mm. 
I did Sweet Child of Mine, which is, you've been playing this song for oh, the, the way, too long, way too long. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we recorded that and um, my dad's uh, he's, he said that, you know, I thought that I would have to do loads of things to the track and just to cheer it up, but you were blown away. <laughs> I was, yeah, yeah. She's, she's obviously been keeping it quiet because I didn't, I didn't realise she could sing like that. And as soon as I heard it, I said, oh, I'm going to do something like <laughs> so it, it took, what, how, how many years did it take then before you realised that your daughter had this amazing talent? 25? Yeah. 25. <laughs> <laughs> Were you not singing around the house and in the, in the shower and stuff? No, very well, shy. Uh, I, I, well, I was, but, I, but I would make sure that nobody was in the house or that nobody... Oh. <laughs> and all of a sudden that talent just exploded out of you yeah, and there's no yeah. stopping you. Yeah, yeah. So after, <laughs> after you'd gone for the job interviews and it didn't work out, you, you did this recording with your dad. So then how did it continue from there? Well, um... You, t you pretty much said, look, um, one way that you can, you know, get yourself sorted out is you could actually turn this into a job. You know, you can do functions, you can do, you know, private, you know, events and stuff like that. Um, and you can also record your own songs mm -hmm. as, you know, as, as a way to try and, try and turn it into like a little business sort of thing. So that's, that's what it turned into. And but then the original songs we started to really start to focus on that a bit more than yeah, I enjoyed them a lot more. <laughs> so, so, so the function by went out the window. Is this is the <laughs> subwriting then a joint effort between the two of you? Or is it just yeah. you, Taylor? Yeah. It was the two of us that, that did the writing and uh, composing composing of the songs. And then we got joined by Jimmy and uh, Bodie not long afterwards, and then Laura joined in. Not that long ago? No, no, not that long ago. We, uh, was, we started off with um, Jimmy on bass and Bodie on the drums, but Jimmy's, yeah. just, uh, Jimmy's just become a father, so he's had to uh, oh. take a seat for a while, so Laura's in there. Yeah. <laughs> and Jimmy's a multi-instrumentalist, I believe, so he's on the bass. What else does he play? Anything. You can, Anything. 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 Please. If, if, if you gave him a comb and a piece of paper, he would, he would play something by paper. <laughs> <laughs> Ah. He just picks an instrument up and he just oozes music. Mm -hmm. He's a really, really talented lad. Really so how talented. did you find the other members of the band? Well, we had uh, we had a deaf drummer for a while um, called uh, Alan Alan Turnbull, and we asked him, you know, uh, are you wanting the position of being our main drummer? But he had too, too many projects anyway. I think he was in like some bands, and he said, I can't commit to the hours that you're wanting me to do. However. <laughs> My son also plays drums. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we got him over uh, for an audition, which was yeah. this it was this time last year, actually. A year ago, yesterday. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, year ago yesterday. And as soon as we heard him play, I um, was like, "Yes, you've got you've got the job. You've got the position." Yeah. <laughs> That worked out pretty well then, didn't it? It is, yeah. It yeah. did, yeah. <laughs> what I'd like to, to to talk to you about first of all, before we go on to your EP was your single from 2019, yes. Frankenstein. So what is that song about? That's about um, my hereditary multiple exostosis. Um, right. Not, isn't it? Yes. Because <laughs> I really got the well, feeling listening to that, that you've written that from your personal experiences. Yes. Um, so as a kid, um, you know, kids, they don't particularly, they don't understand most of the time. I'm not going to say all kids, but a lot of kids that I've, met and um i got left out a lot and picked on a lot and it's kind of me looking back on those years and thinking actually i'm going to own that so the name uh frankenstein was actually inspired by a name i got called by this kid i forget his name now that's how insignificant kids can be very cruel very yeah. cruel um and when we were writing the song, and I, I mentioned it to him, like you, we can't not use that now. Um, we have, we have to use it. it became this thing of accepting who I am now, and you know what I have, what, how it makes me appear to people, and uh, it's it turned out a lot better than I originally thought. Because when we released it, we were getting 
messages from um you know people and parents who have the same condition mm. you know saying thank you so much for giving my child uh this confidence yeah um, <laughs> and it was it was really nice to to actually hear because my first thought was i've just given the child some something that i didn't have and that was mm. throughout my condition to mm. look at they actually i can do all these things mm. Mm. You must get a very warm feeling from that, knowing that you've sort of helped somebody else feel better about themselves. Oh yeah, um, yeah. there's there's uh, a couple of uh, our our viewers on the live streams who uh, they watch it with their kids who have the condition, and uh, there's a there's this one girl in in, uh, in in the states who's just she she dances along to it. Um, one time we got a message off her mum saying. Uh, we were watching you in in a restaurant and when the waiter came to take us to a table she was saying but i want to watch up now norman oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very that's very nice so we're going to move on now to just talking about your debut ep so this was released on the 5th of september it's called the end of the day and there's four tracks on it so tell us about the ep um, so the EP, it was meant to be an album, but because of the virus, we couldn't get the, the band in to do the, the full tracks. Right. So before the lockdown, we usually record our rehearsals anyway. And uh, we got lucky, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, because these are the four tracks, that uh, the four of our original tracks that were actually, without realising it, we were, we were lucky enough to have recordings of them. So they were the four that were put out. Um, they're probably the four that we would have picked anyway, to mm -hmm. be fair. Definitely. Mm -hmm. They're all autobiographical in nature. Um, the, mm -hmm. the song uh, where we get the EP's name from, The End of the Day, um, that's pretty much the main focus of, mm -hmm. of the EP that's about ADHD and, and stuff like that. That was, that was, that's pretty much our pride and joy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was... You say that's your favourite song on the, on the EP, probably. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, think, so. I think it was the first song that we actually completed as well, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. well, 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 the first yeah. song together. And it's all about your ADHD and, and uh, the medication for it and stuff mm -hmm. like that, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, it's, it, we wanted something that people with ADHD and people who don't have ADHD can relate to. Yeah. And, and you know, the fast pacedness and, you know, the quite angry lyrics and feeling quite wild in, in a way. Mm -hmm. That, that feeling where they're just out of control in a good way and they feel on top of the world and mm. um, it's it's got a lot a lot to do with that but um, the main thing that we really loved about it was our fans loved it so much and we managed to make a video with all our fans and stuff like that that, that was, that, that that was, was fun. really fun yeah. to do um, some of the some of the footage was was absolutely great that got sent in um, Judas uh, Funnily enough, we've just realised that two years ago today, the events of Judas happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, really? What were the events? Um, so, uh, two years ago to this day, um, I got out of surgery for one of my exostosis. I had to go back in because I developed complications. Um, and then a couple of days after I got out, my boyfriend of five years left me and I found out a month later that he had left me for another woman. Well, you were in oh. hospital. It's an hospital. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my second favourite uh, track of, of, of the EP. So you, named, so you named a song after him then? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, a little like memento that. to rem remember him by. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So um, given that you were going to put out an album, but you've, you've reduced it to an EP, do you have the other songs then ready, or will they be ready to go out as, a, as say, a separate EP to follow up? Um, we're, we're hoping to. Um, we were mm. in the middle of, of doing just that. Uh, we've got, well, the, the basics of uh, two songs right now, one of yeah. which um, we're hoping to release in November, um, called Little Cheryl. Um, and then local lockdown happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, um, we're hoping to sort of coordinate everybody and trying to uh, say, look, c 
can we try and get everybody to record their part in their own time and see how that works? Yep. Um, might be a bit experimental. We're not 100% sure. We've never done this sort of thing before. <laughs> <laughs> but it should be fun. Yeah, yeah you'll, you'll give it a go. See how it turns oh, out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, will you be touring at all or playing gigs or anything? Because obviously, you know, COVID has disrupted everything. Mm -hmm. So what will you be doing, say, when we come out of it? Um, well, at the minute, we've got a few live stream gigs uh, lined up. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be doing a live stream with We Are Manchester. Um, OK. And that's pretty much how it's going to be for the foreseeable future, because you know, can't get the band together to rehearse and really it doesn't feel right to gig as much as we used to at the moment given the circumstances, can't really mm -hmm. sing to people, you know, we it's just, you know, making sure that everybody's as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then you can't, you know, guarantee that. We did one gig uh, a couple of weeks ago, but it was outside, so there was plenty mm -hmm social distancing and stuff like that and that felt yeah. a bit um but uh when it comes to indoor gigs unless it's actually because we did a live stream gig indoors in newcastle which was great but um if we were to, uh, being asked to do um, a gig in front of an audience pardon me sorry um it would feel a little bit I don't know, very touch and go. How about you? No. Uh, well, I, I think it all depends on the venue, really. Mm. It's, uh, we, we do have a local venue up here. Um, mm. that, well, they, they put an awful lot of live shows on. But um, even there, the, most of their gigs are outside. But obviously, with the weather changing now, that's that's going to be a big thing over the winter. Mm. 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 Um, but certainly, we've been doing an awful lot online. Mm. And we intend to be doing it. Yeah. Um, we've been online like, every night now since before yeah. since before the, the first lockdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, lastly, I just want to touch on something you mentioned right at the beginning of the interview about being a covers band. So you, you play at functions, weddings, parties, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what sort of songs do you cover and what are your favourite ones to play? Um, we do a bit of everything, actually. Um, we mostly focus on, on rock music and any that pop cover or country cover we try to add a bit of a rock edge to it no <laughs> we do everything from kick by the ocean to black sabbath that's what we do yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um mostly it's it's it mostly focuses on like heart and ozzy osbourne can't get can't be a bit of ozzy osbourne yeah we've done i name uh we've done queen we've done all sorts. <laughs> Again, when we first started off, the idea was to be very commercial, but she, she's, she's, she's a rock chick. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I was going to say, actually, were these all like the bands that you, you know, listen to and then you've passed them on to your daughter? Is yeah. that how it's worked? You yeah. Know, she, you know, you've done something right when you're not on your daughter's door and she's listening to your Guns N' Roses CDs. <laughs> <laughs> well done, you. <laughs> Never look back. <laughs> Oh, well, it's been really lovely talking to you and, you know, best of luck with your next release and with your current one, which is doing incredibly well. I hope everyone will check it out and, of course, check out your live streams as well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. so I hope to see you around when, you're, when you are touring, whenever yeah. that might be. Let me know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, say hi to Norman for me. Once <laughs> <laughs> again. Take care guys, that's all. Bye. Bye.